Hi, my name is Ryan Birkenholtz. Welcome to my garage. We're going to be changing the rear differential fluid on this 2007 Dodge Durango. Let me show you what you need to get started. Okay, to change the rear differential fluid in a 2007 Dodge Durango, you're going to need a few things. Um, you're going to need a 13 16 socket on a fairly big, at least half inch wrench. Um, this is to take the Watts crank bolt out. Uh, it should be in there pretty tight. So you need at least half inch wrench. Um, you'll need a half inch, I believe. Yes, half inch uh, wrench for the differential case bolt. You'll need some RTV sealant for a new gasket material. You'll need some type of uh, scratch pad. This is like a scotch bright pad, uh, as well as a razor that will be useful for getting the old gasket material off. You'll need uh, three quarts of 75W140 um, full synthetic lube oil. Uh, it takes just over two quarts, I believe, so I got three just to be safe. You'll need some kind of pan to catch the uh, differential fluid. I mean, you're going to use a, a paint tray. And then lastly, you'll need some sort of uh, fluid pump. It'll come in different shapes and sizes. This one just uses a squeeze ball. So. Let's get started. All right, the rear differential fluid case is uh, between the two rear wheels. So let's go under the vehicle and take a look. This is the rear differential case. Um, this is the fill plug. There's no drain plug. The fluid's drained by cracking the case and it'll just drain out. Um, so what we're going to be doing here is we'll have to remove the Watts link, which is this bolt right here. It uh, should be on there pretty tight, I believe. And then after we get that off, we're going to be removing all these uh, case bolts and uh, be prying along the edges carefully so that we don't bother or don't uh, damage the gasket seal area and uh, then the fluid should drain out and then we can uh, put a new gasket on uh, refill it with fluid and we should be good to go okay now we're going to remove the watts link okay this watts bolt is on here really tight it took me a while to figure out how to get it off um, I suppose if you had it up on a lift or if you had an impact wrench it would be a lot easier but uh, just word of warning it takes uh, quite a bit to get it off okay another tip is if the spare tire gets kind of in the way of this bolt it'd probably be a lot easier without the spare tire in here but I'm going to try to just maneuver around it Okay, now the Watts link is out, we'll move on to the differential case. Now we'll start removing the crankcase bolts. Okay, that's the last bolt from the differential case. Now we'll carefully pry around the ceiling surface to uh, let the fluid drain. I'm going to use a screwdriver to carefully pry the case off of the differential. Um, there's a, a spot right down here on the lowest bolt hole that feels like a good spot to pry. So I'm just going to crack it open right here. Okay, we'll let that drain for a little bit, and then we'll come back and take the case the rest of the way off. It's been draining for a little bit. Um, 
I'm going to take this case cover off and we'll clean up the gasket surfaces and start reassembling it. differential case looks like. Here's the differential case. Um, we need to scrape all the orange silicone gasket material off. To do that I'm going to use a razor blade and then get the rest of it off with uh, some type of scratchy pad. So let's get this off. Got it nice and clean. Um, I'm going to hit it with a little uh, adhesive cleaner just to clean up any residual oils or uh, dirt on the ceiling surface. All right, now let's move on to the uh, case itself underneath the car. I'm going to clean up the transfer case gasket surface uh, the same way as the other surface with a razor blade and scratch pad. Of course it's a little more difficult to it's under the vehicle but we'll just work our way at it and get it nice and clean. We've got the gasket surface nice and clean. I'm going to wipe it down again with uh, adhesive remover. Okay, looks good. Um, we'll probably wipe it down once more right before assembly uh, just to make sure um, we get all the oil. As you can see, we've got some more dripping out. Now it's time to put the gasket material on the surface of the cover. Um, follow the instructions of the gasket material. I'm going to be running a quarter inch bead around here, around all the bolt holes, and um, then we need to assemble it finger tight and wait about an hour and then tighten everything up. Now let's go reassemble the differential. I'm going to wipe the surface down once more to get rid of the oil so we can get a nice good seal. And let's reassemble it. Okay, we're going to let this sit for about uh, 45 minutes to an hour and then we'll come back and actually tighten down these bolts and after that we'll refill 
the differential case. It's been about an hour now. We're going to tighten the bolts down and then we can proceed with filling the differential case. We've torqued down the bolts on the differential case and now we're about to fill it. So I, I placed the hose into the fill hole. I'm going to actually not do this from under the car. I'm going to go out and, and just pour the fluid into the hose directly and it should flow right into the differential case. We got the differential case full of fluid. Um, now I'm just going to replace the fill plug. And now we can reinstall the, uh, the bolt back in the Watts link. The Watts link should have thread locker compound on it, so I put some on. And we will just reassemble it the same way we disassembled it. This bolt needs to be tightened to 160 foot-pounds. Okay, we're all done.